Casey Gray here, and on this video, we're talking about realistic expectations when it comes to improving the air tightness on major home retrofits. Ryan is the lead for the Conscious Builder team on this particular project, so he's gonna share some details of what the team has been working through here. So this two-story slab on grade is a project we're currently in the process of finishing. The homeowners are retrofitting the kitchen area and mudroom, which account for about 20% of the current building envelope. The original air tightness was 9.2 ACH, and our energy advisor recommended a minimum 16% improvement for an ACH of 7.74. Homesol was the energy advisor for this particular project. So the target for the air tightness test is set by the energy model. So typically leakier houses will have a higher target, so the 20%. Any house that's, uh, and I don't know what the numbers are, but any house that's more uh, relatively tighter uh, will only have a 10% target to, uh, to aim for to meet the grant. We also drop it down to 1.5 to show uh, the, the real impact on uh, air tightness, certainly from the energy perspective of achieving, you know, going beyond the 10 or 20% and achieving a great air tightness result. So we used blown cellulose for an R60 in the attic of the house. Uh, then we used uh, a combination of comfort board and rock wool insulation to achieve an R26 in the walls. And then the floor we used 5 inches of EPS foam type 2, which was an R24. We did end up using 6 mil poly as the air and vapor barrier where we could reach and then use Tescon Vanna to tape around the doors and windows. We took care to wrap the details and, and tape everything together to tie into the existing. If you don't like the noise, it's because Tyler won't stop working. We took time to look after the details and tying everything into the original house, uh, spray foaming where we could and where we couldn't really. <laughs> uh, what a crazy job. One of the more unusual aspects with this project in particular was where the mudroom was situated, which seemed to be an old garage that they had retrofitted many years ago to incorporate into the house. But when they built it, they didn't take any energy considerations into account. And so we were trying to tie that system in as well, but it wasn't part of the scope of our project. So trying to tie in what we were doing into what someone else did 20 years ago was cumbersome and difficult. So going into the air test, I didn't know what to expect. Um, I knew we'd improved the structure, but I couldn't tell you how much. So when we did the air test, we noticed that one area in particular was really bad, and it was that utility wall where the electrical panel was. Uh, so we did our best to tape up that entire area, especially around the electrical panel, in order to head that off. So after having the opportunity to walk around the house during the air blower test, uh, our final result ended up being 6.4, which the client was pretty pleased with. Actually, one of the best things about that project was the client walking through the house during the air blower tour test itself. She got to see for herself exactly where air infiltration happens in the house, and it really opened her eyes as well. With so many factors, ACH improvements are determined on a project by project basis. We recently completed this exterior retrofit and back addition on this mid 1900s home. We wrapped the house in a self-sticking weather barrier from Proclima and added three inches of comfort board 80 for an additional R value of 12. And we started at 4.1 ACH at the beginning of the project and achieved a 1.1. The percentage of change was significantly higher here because we were able to retrofit the entire house instead of a portion of it. The clients were really happy with the results, but in the end, they didn't end up pursuing net zero ready as it would have cost a little bit more money and they had already hit their goals. In a future video, we will be sharing the results of this 100-year-old retrofit we completed last year. Our clients are going to get their blower door test done, and they're aiming for 1.5 ACH or less. Most things in life, it's super important to set a goal or have a target that we're aiming for, and air tightness is no different. So whether it's 1.5 ACH or 1, or if you're going as tight as Passive House, a 0.6 ACH, you do want to set that target and work towards hitting that goal ultimately, because that's also going to play a factor in the ultimate 
energy rating that you're going for or maybe building certification on your project because you can hit certain certifications within a renovation as well. So grateful that you tuned in for this video. I truly appreciate your support. Uh, if you're a contractor, I highly recommend that you check out ConsciousBuilderAcademy.com. We have some free courses there, some great paid courses, including our most recent course on how to sell and market passive homes and other high performance homes. And we're gonna be releasing groups. Actually, we just started to release groups. So if you're excited and you work best with a group, we do have some opportunities there. So once again, check out ConsciousBuilderAcademy.com. All the links are below. Until next time, I'm Casey Gray, and remember to live consciously.